have a hard time figuring out who they're playing against and what they should do. And they're down 2-0 in games and 9-1, and then kind of a light bulb goes on in their mind, like, ding, oh, now I know what to do. And then they make a fabulous comeback and, you know, get back to 9-9, and then the opponent gets a net and an edge and the match is over. And they're like, man, I figured it out, but it was a little too late. So the thing that I want is I want you to tell me what are some of the things that you can do to try to figure out who you're playing against and what you should do? So what might be some things initially that you can figure out? Chris, I know you got a good one. I knew you were gonna raise your hand. Are they left-handed or right-handed? Right okay, fabulous. Thank you. That was, that was for your friend sitting next to you. All right, what else? Yes. Okay, and that's one of my big things, is you are actually allowed to check their racket. Daniel, give me your racket. If they won't give you your racket, tell the tournament referee, that's me, and I'll pry it out of their fingers, and I'll hand it to you and say, here you go, you can check out the racket. You're allowed to take the ball and check the bounce, and you're allowed to check the friction, okay? Don't take your oily, sweaty, nasty finger and rub it on their rubber because their brand new sheet of whatever they're using is not gonna be good. And I tell players all the time, I have one racket here, it's long pips, it costs $60. And somebody tested my pips to see if it was long or short and they literally scrubbed the pips right off my rubber. So that's a really good way of getting your opponent in a bad mood is to damage his rubber right before your match. Okay, so don't do that. If you take their racket, you need to be considerate of it. Your hand should not smell bad. You shouldn't be rubbing sweat and oil all over their racket. You're checking the rubber. You're not trying to damage their equipment. Good. What else? Yeah, Michael, can you not bounce the ball? Thank you. Brody? What was that? Reading the spin. And this is one generalization that's actually quite important. And I hear this one a lot. People will say, oh, his push wasn't as spinny as I thought. And we, we missed the first, you know, 20 loops off the end of the table because his push was quite light, okay? Some people vary the spin, but a lot of times people have a lot of spin, a medium amount of spin, or some players, especially at intermediate level, they have practically no spin on every ball. Good, what else? Yes, Jacob. Okay, yeah, it's kind of a generalization, but that, that's a good general, um, rule of thumb is, is their backhand or forehand stronger? Adam? Uh, for three four months, like, given the variation, Okay, but during warm-up, you should actually try to warm up. You shouldn't be trying to make too many tactical plays in warm-up, but you can observe that, yes? Alex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Chance, what should Alex do? <laughs> okay, uh, Laura? <laughs> Laura? <laughs> if and how often they attack. Okay, so that's one generalization that's critically important is to realize, do they generally win most of their points from attacking? Or do they win most of their points from keeping the ball on the table and letting you make mistakes? If they're winning most of their points from strong offensive shots, what are we gonna do? We're gonna think, which are their strongest shots and how can I keep it away from them? If they're winning the bulk of their points by just knocking the ball on the table and keeping it on, we have to think, okay, we can be a little bit more relaxed. They're not gonna end me. They're waiting for my errors. So I have to play a little bit smarter, work the point longer, and really choose which one to go for. That's one of my biggest pet peeves for playing people playing defensive players, is they go out there and they swing big for everything. I'm like, what are you doing? They're like, I gotta go through him. I'm like, yeah, but he really doesn't do anything except block or except push. You can work the point longer. Be more selective and go for the right one. Back in the day, one of my top students, he was a chopper, he was 12 years old. Really quite a high level chopper. And his main opponent that he struggled with was an ultra consistent looper that could loop a lot of balls on the table. As soon as he went out to play another junior and the guy's just swinging for the fence every time, he got this big smile on his face because he's like, oh, this is easy. 
All I have to be able to do is keep it away from him, give him enough variation, return one or two of those massive forehands, and I'm good to go. That consistent player that was able to work the point long and be very selective, this is what struck fear into him because he now knew, man, I'm gonna have to actually work for this as opposed to getting handed the match. Angie, I know you're cooking up something good from Hawaii. What is it? Aloha. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Good. 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 So their height. Okay. Typically, shorter players do better playing from the middle. Typically, taller players do better from the wider angles. But their distance from the table, that's a critically important one. And then also their ability to move. Some players move better to the wide forehand. Some players move better to the wide backhand. Some players move better from the middle. Making all those observations are good. All right. One or two more. What do you got for me, Amelia? You don't know? Okay. Anna, you got anything? No? Okay, all right. So I want you guys to continue to think through these kind of things. That way you can be analyzing your opponent from the beginning of the match. Primary, most important, above all, is to go out there with your strengths. And you say, I never met this guy center in my life, but I'm gonna come out with my strongest serves, my strongest shots, and I'm gonna force him to adjust to me. That's the primary thing. But as the match progresses, as you, as you start warming up, as the first point, second point, third point, first game, second game, and things are not going your way, you need to start thinking more like, how can I make adjustments in my game based on the opponent? Wow, this guy does really have a great forehand loop. Why am I keep pushing long to his forehand every single time? Maybe I should push short to the middle, or maybe I should push deep to the backhand, as opposed to feeding his strengths every time. All right, any other questions or comments? Yes. I don't know if it's the tips or but I try and find out while watching them warm up with someone else or something, watch them, which shots do they dislike? Okay, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And there's different ways of doing tactical analysis. Sarah and I have made a couple of videos on tactical analysis. When you're looking at an opponent and you're watching him play the round robin group match before you, taking notes on what he's doing well, what he's doing bad, what he's serving, what he's receiving. There's a lot of different ways you could do it, but just taking notes on every single ball that he missed is actually one way to do it, okay? So you lost the first game 11-8. Sarah should have notes written down on the 11 ways that you missed, right? So, so if you understand that, that's great. That's a great thing, okay? And that's one of the things that you need to be able to like focus on and it also gives you confidence. A lot of times people go out there like, oh, I'm so nervous, Samson. I'm like, why are you nervous? Did you see that massive counter loop that Seth made? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But thinking about that massive counter loop that Seth made is not going to give you confidence. Look at those 11 shots that Seth missed. He is pathetically bad, and you are amazing, and you go out there and take him down. But sometimes we, we, we hold them in too high of esteem. Like, I, I, I don't think I can do it. He's fitter than I am. He hits harder than I am. Then, then you have no confidence going into the match. So look at all the weak points and say, man, he's got a lot of weak points. This gives you a lot of confidence. So I'm not into trash talking a lot, but sometimes a little bit of trash talk in your mind actually helps your confidence. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it does. So if, you ha if you're playing somebody, and it says that they have a Tenergy 05, and you take the ball and you slide it across it, and the rubber is like three years old, it looks like it's been baking out in the sun or fried in the microwave, and it has no friction. From the very first point, even though they look like they're putting spin on it, you know it's gonna probably be light or medium with absolutely no friction. It's not gonna be heavy, right? But if you don't know that, potentially you could be down 4-0 in the first game before you realize Oh, this dude has absolutely no spin on his push. But if you would have checked that ahead of time, you could have already been having that thought process. All right. Samson. Yes. So like, you can also see like how they serve, like and then what they draft for. So if they serve popcorn, yes. like chance that they serve popcorn. Yeah, like chance. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, what are your thoughts on this chance? <laughs> 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 
Yeah. So, uh, out of all the things, out of all the things that you can look at, serve and serve return probably is the number one thing. How do they serve? Does Laura have any tricky serves? Does Mandy have any ways that she likes returning? Serve and serve return are your two big ones. If you can get into the rally, there are some different ways to push and block and loop, but there are so many different ways to serve that if I were looking at one, that's one of the primary things that I'd be looking at, and I'm sure Chance would also be looking at that, is how they serve and how they return. Good, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> All right, we've got three tactical drills to go. Each drill is going to be 12 minutes, and each drill is going to be two serves each. Okay? Our first 12 minutes, it's going to be short surf, short backspin surf, push, short, medium, or long to any location, and then directly free point. When the coach goes by, he's going to ask you the question, which pushes have brought about the best sequences for you, or which pushes have brought about direct errors from the opponent, okay? When the coach goes by, you should be able to clearly tell him, when I push long to Laura's backhand, it's okay. When I push long to Laura's forehand, it's a disaster. But when I push wide angle to Laura's backhand, I've got a point every time. When I push short, her forehand flip is good, Backhand flip, eh, she's making some errors. So when I'm pushing to her, I'm pushing maybe short middle, short backhand, or like vi very wide angle backhand, this is the best plan against Laura, okay? So the coach, you should be able to tell the coach which one's working and which one's not, okay? That's the first 12 minutes. Second 12 minutes is short surf, flip anywhere, and then directly free point. And again, you should be able to tell the coach which types of flips and which locations are setting up your game best. Okay? And then the third 12 minutes is directly serve anything, short, medium, or long, and free point. And again, you should be able to tell your coach as he goes from table to table what's working and what's not. It's very difficult to play tactically smart if we have no clue what's working and what's not working. So as soon as we go out there, Alex, what's the first 12 minutes? Yes. No, no, no. Short, medium, or long, only push, and then free point. And how many serves each? Yeah, not five, not seven, not 12, two serves each, good. And Advik, where's he at? There he is, seven-year-old Advik. What's the second drill? You don't know? Come on, I told Chance last night, I said, you always know the answer. Yeah, yeah, what's the second drill? Uh, Fiona, Fiona, stand up, stand up. What's the second drill? Short serve, flip anywhere, and three point. Three point, not three point, three point. All right, center us, stand up. Shout out loud, really loud. What's the third drill? Yeah, there is a third drill. Yeah, okay, Sarah, stand up. You don't know the third drill. Okay, Seth, stand up. In your... Give me your attention, voice. All right, it's uh, anything, serve, serve, serve. Yes, serve, medium, or long serve. Thank you, sir. All right, head back to your same tables, then we'll divide you up.